Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And again, this comes from uh, suggestions from a couple of my subscribers, and it has to do with the huge snow bust of January 2000. If you lived in this area during that time, you'll recall that the forecasts were for very little snow, and all of a sudden we ended up with the biggest 24-hour snowfall on record at RDU, over 20 inches. Uh, actually started on the night of January 24th and then snowed all night long and well into the morning of January 25th. All right, so let's talk about this in a bit more detail. And all I can say is it was a bad forecast if you get my drift. All right, so a few things about models before we get into this case specifically. Previous short-term model forecasts are used as what we call a first guess for the next analysis. And usually these model forecasts are in, uh, uh, well, they're actually in six-hour cycles, but if I'm correct, and what I've been told is right, that basically the previous 12-hour forecast is used as a first guess for the analysis for the period 12 hours after that. So like for instance, if we're doing an analysis for 8 p.m. Uh, one evening, then we would look at the 8 a.m. model forecast for 12 hours, and that would be the background for the analysis, the first guess, if you will. So this is called the background, okay, because we want consistency from one model run to the next. We don't want a whole bunch of knee-jerk changes from one analysis to the other. So this helps to sort of smooth that out. Then new observations are compared to the background uh, provided by the previous model forecast. And those new observations can be used, and in many cases are, to modify the background and make it more accurate. So it's almost like if that first guess or the 12-hour forecast is beginning to deviate from reality, you know, gradually getting away from reality, then these observations that are incorporated in sort of bring it back. It's like, hey, you're drifting a little bit. Let's get you back on track here, okay? But this comparison can also be used to detect observation errors that can then be thrown out. And if they were included in the uh, data assimilation process, then this would be a problem. It would actually make the analysis worse. Now, this can be bad instrumentation. It could be a coding error. There's all sorts of different things that could happen. But the process here is intended to quality control the observations. So if they're good observations and they're incorporated, that's going to help the analysis. If they're bad observations, then you don't want any part of that. All right. So about some of the details of the January 25th, 2000. On the morning of January 24th, the Peachtree City Radiosonde, and that is the uh, observation site that is near Atlanta, found a wind from the south-southwest at 119 knots at 250 millibars, which is probably up at about 30, 35,000 feet, okay? The background forecast from 12 hours before that for that location was only about 60 knots. So it had the wind one half of what it actually was in reality. The difference between the background, the previous 12 hour forecast and the new observation was so large that the data assimilation process took that observation and threw it out. Said, ah, that's gotta be bad because you know we can't, there's no way that a difference that big could be justified. The first forecasts in 12 hours before could not have been that bad. And so we're going to throw that thing out. That's just going to make things worse. Well, later research suggested that this one missed observation didn't have that much effect on the forecast, but I would argue that it certainly could not have helped uh, to, to miss a wind observation by one half of its magnitude has got to have an effect on the analysis. Now, here is the difference between a 36-hour forecast uh, for the morning of January 25th compared to reality. And the purple lines are the forecast. And so you can see that, yeah, it has a trough in here. And there's a little couple of little dips, you know, indicating little short waves moving through. But it does not have what ended up being a closed upper level low over eastern North Carolina, okay? It simply missed that feature entirely. And 
to miss something that big, uh, and in this particular case with this graphic, only 36 hours out into the future, that just doesn't happen anymore, okay? Not to that magnitude. There are, you know, little details that can be missed, but to miss something that big from going from an open flow to a closed upper level low, that's pretty amazing, especially when it's only 36 hours out. So, some conclusions about all of this. 99.9% .9 of the time, the data assimilation system produces the best analysis humanly possible by quality controlling the new observations. In this case, however, the Peachtree City observation was accurate and its elimination from the data assimilation process helped to lead to enormous errors in the forecast. I'm not going to argue that it was solely responsible for that. There were probably some other things going on too, but it certainly did not help. And that morning, there were also thunderstorms that morning across Georgia with temperatures in the 40s. So clearly, those thunderstorms were not being created by warm, humid air at the ground, okay? So what this indicated was that there was a lot of instability aloft, and we call that elevated convection where it may be cold near the ground, but it actually warms up as you go up through the atmosphere. And then that layer, that layer where it's relatively warm, the lax rate and temperature from there on up is very, very steep. And so you can actually get convection or thunderstorms that have a high base well above the ground. And when those thunderstorms form and you have all that condensation going on, then there's a latent heat release from all of that condensation. And that undoubtedly contributed to the intensification of the system as well. So, looking back on it, and again, model resolution has improved and the data assimilation process has improved over the last 23 years. But in this particular case, a key observation, which I think would have made the forecast much better, was thrown out due to a process that most of the time works very well, but in this particular case did not and led to a gross underestimate of the snow amounts that were observed across the Carolinas all the way up to Washington, D.C. All right, that's bonus weather video number two for this week. Hope you have a great weekend. The daily weather update will be coming up, of course, later this afternoon, and the next bonus weather video will be next Tuesday. All right, folks, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.